a coach as, as disruptive and productive as Jonathan Marshall has been this year? Is he to the point where, you know, he's going to get some pretty serious NFL looks? Well, absolutely. I mean, uh, I've talked to several different guys about him. Um, he's played his way into a draftable player, I believe, and and you're not going to get a whole lot better kid than him uh, if you take him on your football team. So, absolutely, he's had a really good year. I'm really proud for him, and, and um, I believe he'll get looks in the NFL. Bob? Sam, I guess we saw Davion uh, obviously had to be helped off the field. Wondering what his status is. I know Hudson dressed out but didn't play. I think Uche and Kern maybe went out late. Just wondering if you could give us an update on all those guys. You guys act like I made better than an 18 on my ACT. You just threw four players at me, so I'm gonna, you know I'm going to ask you again what who it was. But Davion Warren is out. He's, he's, uh, he's got ACL and he's out for the season. I hate it for him. Um, but he's got a good attitude about it, and, and um, I feel terrible that happened. Um, Hudson Henry is um, – he will, he will be back. He'll practice today. Hopefully um, we'll see, you know, uh, how he's going to react. Um, but we hopefully will have him back by Saturday. Who else did you ask about? Uh, Kern and Fouché look like maybe they, they got shook up. Kern, I think Kern will be fine. Um, and Joe, I think Joe will be fine. I'm impressed you remember what you scored on that test. I don't remember what I scored. <laughs> well, if you made an 18, you would remember it. Okay. <laughs> Nate? Yeah, just what do you make of LSU, Sam, since they've been, been off and, you know, obviously not had the year they expected. You know, it's unfortunate for them because they haven't played in 21 days. You know, it'll be 21 days since they were able to play. And and uh, I think they're a physical team. They're a young team. You know, they lost a lot of uh, great talent on that team. But obviously, they've recruited exceptionally well there. And uh, they have LSU written all over them. Big, physical. Uh, they're big on both sides of the ball. Um, you know, um, very aggressive. They have the LSU wideouts, you know. Uh, of course, uh, Reed Gilbert is a great young tight end. Uh, but on offense, you know, they're a power football team, play action. Uh, Finley's done a nice job in there at quarterback for them, as, long as, as well as Max Johnson. Uh, so offensively, uh, they certainly have caused a lot of problems for us. Defensively, they're big. They're a little more, they're a little more simplified this year in what they're doing up front. I play a lot of four-man line, um, really good in the back end, very physical in the back end. Um, obviously, Jacoby Stevens is one of the top corners in the country, or for safeties in the country, and along with Stingley at corner and and uh, Harris uh, at safety. So they're very talented and have a lot of team speed. Uh, lost some guys at the linebacker spot that they're, they're playing uh, different guys in that area there, but Big and physical on both sides of the line and, and uh, certainly have, have a lot of problems that we've got to try to fix uh, before uh, they get here on Saturday. Hutch? Yeah, Sam, I was going to ask you a couple updates on another uh, couple of guys. Uh, Bo Limmer and Noah Gatlin, do you have any update on them, uh, if they're going to be able to be back this week? I don't know. Um, we're going to have to wait and see on both those guys. Um, uh, I'll know a little bit more about it possibly on Wednesday, um, but we're hoping to get at least one of them, hopefully both, but at least one of them back. Tom? Hey, Sam, I got a couple things. First, how are you doing? And uh, are you on target for coming back on Wednesday? I am. Uh, thank you for asking. I I'm, I'm feel uh, really good. Um, and I'll, I'll be back in the office on Wednesday, and and um, I sure appreciate everybody. Um, old Daddy told me a long time ago, the world don't rotate around my butt, but it sure felt like it with all the well wishes and all those things, and I sure do appreciate it. And I'm following up on a question that, um, last week about the composition of your coaching staff. 
And you've kind of talked in bits and pieces to us about them being like-minded, positive reinforcement type coaches. As you were putting, was putting it together, was that a big part of guys who thought the way you did to, to have on the staff? I think it was a big part of guys who treat people like I do. You know, I, I mean, hopefully I'm, I'm treat folks the right way and all those with ultimate respect. And, and I wanted guys around me that have that same um, mannerism about them, same respect for people. And that also that, that goes back to the players as well. And, and I think we did a good job. We have, we really do. We have a great camaraderie in our building and everybody wants everybody to have success. And, and it's a lot of fun going to work. And certainly I've been out now for eight or nine days, but uh, it's a lot of fun going in the building and being around great men and, and women for that matter as well. Nikki. Coach, we've talked about Davion several times this season already, but what does losing him for the rest of the year mean to the team and for that room? Um, are there any guys that are maybe coming along and, and developing through this part of the, the season and maybe uh, Darren Turner, how's he look? Yeah, you know, uh, when you start ask, asking that question, Darren was the first one that popped to my mind. Uh, you know, he's been in and out of some quarantines and some different things. It's probably hurt his development. Um, but, uh, you know, we have, <clears throat> excuse me, we have Trey Knox and Trey will step in there along with Morris and, and uh, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> those guys will do well, um, no doubt in my mind. But the young guys, uh, uh, certainly Darren would be the one uh, that we would uh, travel and move up in, in, into one of those nine spots. Trey Biddy. Hey, Coach, I was uh, glad to hear you're feeling better. Uh, I was curious, when you're watching the game at home, how do you how do you watch it? Are you pacing? Are you sitting down? I guess you're in the pool house. And uh, also, is there anything else that you have to do aside from just being 10 days out from your, your positive test? No, I think that I, they'll probably test my heart like they do everybody else, you know, whenever they come back from COVID to make sure that's fine. Um, but, you know, the game, watching the game, uh, was difficult, you know, because uh, you're just not there. And, and for whatever reason, you feel like your presence would have, you know, something to do with the game and all that. I don't want to give myself that much credit. But, but I, you know, I just missed being around the guys. And, and uh, you know, when Barry, uh, when they went for it on fourth and one there on about the 50, I'd have gone for it too, you know, uh, even though it wasn't. A successful play and I thought the coaches did a really good job of keeping them and the players uh, but it was hard you know and like I say Lucy don't say much and she wasn't too much into the game you know so I had to kind of be by myself on that one. Kyle. Hey, Coach you've been pretty open I think about you know what you've experienced over the last week in battling the virus. I wonder if you can expand you know kind of any more on, on, on what you faced and are you still taking the vegetable mix or what's working yeah. for you? The vegetables are good. The walking's been good. You know, the bottom line for me, I was very fortunate because it was, it was fatigue and pain in my back. You know, that was basically what my symptoms were. It started in the lower back around the kidney area and then worked up north around my shoulders, but not, not for very long. Uh, but it was more the fatigue. I really never had any, you know, cold-like symptoms or anything of that nature. I was just tired, and it was hard to have these meetings and and put on a face that, you know, I was, I was tired. I was wore out, and sometimes it's that way from the season at this point in time of the season as well. But uh, uh, that was those were my symptoms, and you know, I, I thought about doing a daily deal, you know, to kind of let people know how ones that haven't had COVID kind of how it, how it attacks you. But then I thought again, that everybody has certainly so much different symptoms in COVID that I, I didn't want to do that. And I didn't want to be disrespectful for folks that have, you know, obviously COVID has taken the loved one's life. So I tried to stay away from that as much as possible. 
Dudley. Hey, Coach, at the start of the year, you talked about wanting to get the, the football team bigger and stronger. Do you think this recruiting class uh, has made some steps toward that? And also, as you finish out the class, I know you've talked about possible transfers as well. What are you, what are you looking, you know, need-wise to finish it out with? You know, Dudley, I wish I could answer about the bigger, stronger, but heck, we we ain't seen half of them. You know, I mean, we don't know what half of them look like. <clears throat> we have an idea, but uh, <clears throat> you know, it's all on film. Um, certainly, uh, we think we have, um, and we have to continue to get. You know, obviously, on the D line, we have to get bigger over there in the O line. And, those are where teams that are so powerful that we're playing that, you know, they're just big and physical on the O and D lines um, as well as every other position. But that those are the two positions that stick out. Uh, obviously, there's a transfer world out there that, you know, we would take an O and a D lineman and we you know, we may even take, you know, who knows uh, where else, but a linebacker or some that depends on if we can talk some of these guys into staying or not. But, we're going to save some, Dudley, uh, for transfers uh, for immediate need because uh, obviously everybody can see that the transfers that we we took last year, most of those guys have really helped us this year. And you know, number one off the right off the top of my head is Felipe Franks. You know, and he certainly has helped us. So, and, and along with other guys, so we're going to save some to have an opportunity to do that again. Thanks, Coach. I'm glad you're feeling better. Thank you. All right, let me know if you've got more questions in the chat. Bob? Sam, uh, you seem like you know everybody. I was wondering if you know Ed Orgeron very well and just what you think of Ed. Well, I think a lot of him, you know, with the success he's had. I don't know him well. I mean, you know, we know uh, fellow coaches that know each other and this, that, and other. But I did tell Ed um, or Coach Orgeron that, I believe that he gave us non-coordinators an opportunity, and I think it makes it easier for – maybe it does, maybe it doesn't – for athletic directors to hire non-coordinators, non-head coaches, and I think he proved uh, that it can be done, you know, because he was a D-line coach for majority of his life and uh, got the opportunity there, I believe, at Ole Miss. And, and uh, so – I was very thankful to him because I think he's one of the guys, there's about three or four of them, but one of the guys that started um, opportunities for non-coordinators to be head coaches. Hutch? Yeah, Sam, you've talked in the past about Burks trying to get him like 10 touches a game. I think he only had five against Florida. W were they doing something in particular to take him away or, or what, what happened there? No, I don't believe so. I think we just we, – we've got to target him more. Uh, you know, he's he's got to become a better practice player. He's got to he, – you know, there's some things that he can do as well to make sure that we uh, get him the ball more. Uh, he can run better routes, these, those things. This is not uh, being uh, negative towards him whatsoever. I think, you know, hand in hand, you have to call plays to get him the football, and then he's got to work to get open and things. They weren't doing anything – different than anybody else has. Tom. Jalen Catalan had a couple of big hits in that game, and we've seen that through the course of the season. Um, the, the value of having a safety who makes guys think twice about going over the middle, just w what have you thought of Jalen's year and his, his impact as a big hitter? Well, I really didn't know much about anybody on the team when the season started. <clears throat> Certainly didn't have any chance to see him hit anybody. But to me, he's he's the key to our defense. And we're so fortunate that he's young, he's a freshman, but in mentality, he's, he's a senior. I mean, he's very, very smart on the field and in the classroom. So is his brother. Uh, but uh, – He's just real valuable to us. He's 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 got that uh, calm demeanor about about him, and you know that kind of that silent assassin type about his personality, and and he will hit you. And I think there's different games this year where I think he set the tone about what's going to go on out there, and I think it's helped us. Trey Biddy. 
Hey, Coach, I had a question about Devin Bush. What uh, What's the status update with him? We haven't seen him a whole lot this season. Uh, he, he's fine. Um, you know, he's batting a little bit of a shoulder injury. Um, but he's fine. Um, it's just, uh, you know, that injury's probably kept him off the field more than uh, more than what a regular season would be if he wasn't injured. Bob? Sam, I was wondering, what, what point in your career did you start putting together a list of guys you'd want to get on a staff if you could be a head coach? Did you remember maybe about when that was? Yeah, I think it's the day after um, Coach Morris was let go. I think it's when I started uh, trying to figure out who I would want on the staff. Well, no, I, I mean, hypothetically, you know, you're 40 or whatever, 8, 38, I don't know. You start, you know, I mean, I just wondered about if there was a – No, Bob, that. to be honest with you, <clears throat> there was a point in time in my career when I just said, hey, I, I've been very blessed. I'm the old line coach, as associate head coach at Georgia. I'm making a lot of money, and this is this is what the Lord wants for me. And then, and I was and I was thankful for that. And I mean, I had a great job, but you know, so I had kind of made you know I was getting older, and uh, I'd kind of made up my mind that I need to try to be the best offensive line coach in the country, and I need to be very thankful for the job that I have. And uh, then Arkansas came along, so. You know, I've known coaches. I've been to 100 million schools, you know, so I've had the opportunity to meet a lot of coaches. And so that wasn't a problem, you know. That 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 wasn't a problem of getting names. And uh, I'm glad that they thought enough of me to come here to Arkansas with me. I didn't have to go down lengthy in the list uh, because most of the guys I asked uh, decided to come. They were, you know, the top guys on the list. They they decided to, they were able to come be with us at Arkansas. Last one, Hutch. Yeah, Sam, I don't know if I saw Hayden Henry much on defense. Uh, is he healthy? And then also Andrew Parker played probably more than he has all year. What, what did you think of the way he did? did he, is that just a matter of him earning more snaps? Well, I think, I think we went into the game. We had meetings on Saturday morning about how we're going to play the players. And most of the time it kind of goes exactly how we say – Obviously, injuries play a big part in that as well. But, you know, Hayden got beat, you know, he got dinged up a little bit. And uh, that allowed Parker to get a little, few more snaps. And uh, obviously, with the way the game was going, uh, we wanted him to get in there and get some quality game time. He played well. Uh, and, you know, I think Hayden will be fine and he'll be able to get back here on Saturday. All right, that wraps up. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate you. Good to see y'all. Thanks, Sam. Same here. Be the last lamp in this. We, we, when's the next time we get together? Thursday. Yeah. That thing will be gone. See y'all. Have a good one.